just been thinking about the challenges that people are going through at the moment. And I'm very conscious that there's a couple of pe hundred people joining us from around Ireland and around the world at the moment. And every one of us will have our own unique challenges right now, um, whether it be health-wise, again, through bereavement, um, through missing loved ones, not seeing loved ones, the not being able to hug loved ones, not be able to meet up, not be able to gather, not be able to have fun. You know, so it's, it's a very challenging time in so many different ways. And I, I can't speak to what that means to you personally, but I feel it's important to honor it if we are to talk about hope. I was on the radio yesterday and the interviewer asked me for a story from my book. I have a book called Hitching for Hope. And the story that came to mind was a story of a man going through a moment of despair, really. Um, and the interviewer asked me, well, what has that got to do with hope? And it was an interesting question. And I suppose what came to me in the moment, and it's a term I've heard recently, is that you need to feel it to heal it. And what I'm finding is that I feel that we need to create more space for each other just to be heard, just to take a moment, just to take a pause. And it's within that moment, within that pause, that perhaps we can start to breathe. And it's within those breaths that perhaps we start to feel that hope. Now, traditionally in Irish culture, February 1st is seen as the first of spring. The daffodils, I have some daffodils here behind me, the daffodils start popping out and nature starts to come alive. And you do see now a lot of debates raging every year on Twitter and elsewhere around, well, is it really the first of spring? You know, the weather's terrible and so on. Uh, some people would say, you know, mid uh, or, or the 21st, the spring equinox, maybe March 21st, or then even some people would suggest May. Um, but for me, I think this time of the year does have a spring-like quality, a spring-like quality in terms of possibility, in terms of new energy, brighter days. And it comes after the, the season of Samhain, the deepest darkness, the darkness where we go into the pit and we see, we see what needs to be let go. We see what dreams need to be dreamt. We plant new seeds. This event is themed seeds of the heart. And so perhaps now we start to see those seeds blossoming. We start to see buds of possibility to reemerge. But I do empathize with that idea that this may be not the true spring, the full spring. Maybe it's the start of the ritual. And within that, I suspect there's a fragility. You know, it's, it's easy to dismiss it because it doesn't feel like full hope has arrived. We don't feel or see the, the full blossoming of nature. We don't see the change in our lives, the change in our world. But I think there's something about that fragility. I was just reflecting on it this morning, just seeing the buds Hope is fragile. It needs minding. It needs caring. It needs tending. And just because it maybe isn't in full force or in full power, I think that shouldn't mean that we dismiss it or disregard it or let go of it and fall into a sense that there is no hope. And the danger in the world right now is that when we look around, whether it be climate change, the whole challenge of ecosystem collapse, what's happening in our seas, our waters, in our air, what's happening in our politics, the disconnection with people, the rampant inequality, the treatment of survivors of mother and baby homes, the treatment of survivors and those that didn't survive the cervical cancer scandal. We look at the people of Gaza, Yemen, all around the world struggling for basic human rights. A woman from Mongolia killed in Dublin brutally died during the week. Another woman burnt in a car in Cork the other day. I don't mean to create a lot of gloom for you. You've had enough of that. Our newspapers are full of it. But I think let's just name where we're at, that sometimes it is hard to be hopeful. Sometimes it's easy to fall into despair. And some of us can hold that more than others. So it's the more vulnerable that I'm thinking of right now, those that are really clinging on, and it's an appeal for them and to them and with them 
that let's be there for each other. Let's create the collective of hope, the family of hope, the tribe of hope, the movement of hope. Let's look out for each other. Even if it means getting off this event today and texting or phoning or emailing somebody that you feel maybe needs that little bit of an extra boost. I think it's so important right now. And so the compassion for others in the world right now, I'm thinking of refugees and asylum seekers in Ireland right now as well, particularly those in direct provision that don't have the same family connections to us that are maybe isolated in, in what is a really terrible system that we're gonna be talking about later on in this event. But also compassion for ourselves, compassion to be kind to ourselves, to take a pause, to tell yourself it's okay. I, I remember waking up uh, several months ago and I'd been pushing along trying to launch my book and promote my book, which isn't all that easy in a pandemic, but I just woke up with this voice whispering in my head saying, it's okay, it's okay, we're in a pandemic. And I know different people have different views on the, on the pandemic and what it means for us on social political levels and all of that. But to have compassion for the challenges that we face is so important. You know, those of us that are involved in social justice and activism, we want to be pushing forward all the time. We want to be creating change. We want to be leading a light. We want to be supporting others. But sometimes we need to just pull back and put the focus on ourselves. Be kind to ourselves. Give the kindness we give to others to ourselves. So I think that's another realm of hope is to, to give yourself hope, to give yourself that kindness. And to create that community, you know, if the community isn't around you, if you have lost that sense of connection with others, then let's find new ways to do it. Let's do it through live streaming when the, when the glitches don't happen. Let's just find it through group calls. Let's just find other ways of, of making magic happen. You know, the, where there is a will, there is always a way. And I think community and connection are so vital. And we see that now that when we lose it, we kind of re revalue it. And I, I I envisage a resurgence of community, a resurgence of connection. And I'm dreaming up new plans for when we get back into that, when we get to have our festivals again, when we get to have our events together again. But look what's happening here. We have people from Texas, from Arizona, from all over Ireland, from New York, from Liverpool, all joining us in a community that maybe wouldn't have been possible to even get to Kildare for financial or logistical reasons. So there's hope in that. There's hope that we're all part of a movement of change. There's hope that perhaps some of the hate and rhetoric is being dialed down. Perhaps there's been changes in the last week I've seen around the Paris Climate Accord, around arms sales to, to Saudi Arabia. It's those little glimmers, they're so easy to dismiss and I feel that that cynicism is an enemy of hope. I see it all the time. I get a, the occasional email telling me to, to feck off or whatever it is. And I understand that, I understand that. Um, but you know, there's that term, the audacity of hope, but it, hope does take a bit of courage. It takes, it takes a summoning up from what inside ourselves. And I, I, think, I think it takes imagination as well, and it takes choice. I've been um, listening to Edith Edgar, the Holocaust survivor. I, I'm not sure if I pronounced her name right, but she has a new book out called The Choice. And I think so much of it boils down to choice. Do we choose and Chomsky talks about this too. Do we choose a world of hope? Hope is a choice. Do we, what is the opposite of, do we choose despair? So this is a moment for us to choose. And it's within that choice that I think it contains the future. It contains the DNA of where we go from here. So belief is core. We have to believe it in our bones that we can build this better world that we know is possible, that we can reorganize, redefine our systems with politics, ecology, culture, spirituality, whatever it is, to bring power back to the people, to bring community back to its true place in our culture, to celebrate the arts, to celebrate artists, and to celebrate our successes, to celebrate the things that we are winning at, the things that we are getting right. You know, there, there's so much, there's so much that, that is going right. And I think for me, gratitude has been a big part of that. You know, like there's, there's many a moment that I can complain and say, well, this isn't going right or this thing didn't go my way. But then I remind myself that I have shelter. I have a roof over my head. I have food in my stomach. I have access to clean water. I've had access to education. I know people. I've loved ones in my life. Just to remind yourself of those simple things. 
So I know I'm talking about very simple concepts, but unfortunately, I think the simplicity can get lost in the complexity of what's happening in the world right now, that there's so much noise. And so dialing down the noise and just reflecting and taking a moment can be so helpful. And I think that's at the core of what this event is about. It's a moment to reflect, to pause, to listen to each other, to hear from some voices of hope and possibility. I, for one, think that this is a moment of upheaval. It is a moment of turbulence. It is a moment of destruction. There's no getting away from all of that. But it's also a moment of potential reimagining, a potential rebuilding, a potential to really, truly honor and save ecology. You know, because if, there's no getting away from ecology that if we don't, if we don't get to the bottom of our dysfunction and our disconnection with nature, then there is no future, there is no hope. So nature is the hope and our connection with nature is to the hope, is the hope. So I thank you again for joining in. I thank you for your patience and I welcome you all. And those that are joining us from abroad, please come next year. Next year, let's put it in the diary. Next February, let's have the Hope Party in Kildare. And probably we will do it online as well. We'll do both. Uh, and we'll have, a, we'll have one hell of a party together. We'll get the music going. And uh, we'll have a good